Bienvenidos a la Escuela del Podcast. Yo soy Félix Montelara y hoy te quiero hablar sobre esto de la propiedad intelectual conocida como el nombre de tu podcast. Es importante saber que cuando uno elige o busca un nombre para el podcast de uno, que este nombre no esté siendo utilizado por otro podcast. Es sumamente importante porque eso puede llevar al litigio. Y especialmente si es un podcast famoso o un podcast no famoso, no importa. Si el podcast lleva un tiempo y usted utiliza ese nombre, usted va a tener problemas en un futuro con el nombre de su podcast y a lo mejor va a tener que hasta cambiar el nombre de su podcast. Y en el caso de Randolyn Colorack en Australia, ella comenzó un podcast en el 2009 y lo nombró tras su libro que se llamaba Financial Foreplay. El libro se llama Financial Foreplay y le puso el podcast Financial Foreplay. Como en el caso mío, donde yo escribí un libro que se llama Potencial Millonario y mi podcast se llama Potencial Millonario. Pero Randolin llevó el nombre de su podcast un poquito más allá y lo registró con la agencia de su país en Australia como propiedad intelectual, que ahora ella tiene derecho a este nombre de Financial Foreplay. ¿Qué ocurre? Para esto del 2017 llega una joven que se llama Kianik Kendall y Kianik decide nombrar su podcast Sugar Mama Financial Foreplay. O sea que tiene Sugar Mama más el nombre de Randolin, que es Financial Foreplay. Y a Randolin no le cae bien esto y le pide que le cambie el nombre a su podcast y que se disculpe públicamente por el uso del nombre del podcast. Kenick dice que no y terminan en un litigio en la Cortes en Australia. Le quiero enseñar el final de esta disputa y después te voy a enseñar cómo comenzó la disputa con un video sobre las noticias locales en Australia sobre este issue del nombre, que es sumamente importante. Así que le voy a demostrar el video para que usted vea a Randolin hablando de su victoria con el caso en contra de Yannick. Aquí le vamos. One, it's Randolin. I just want to share a win that I had today in the Federal Circuit Court of Australia. Some of you may know that I took Kenna Campbell a.k.a. Sugar Mama, to court for the theft of my intellectual property. Now, we went to court today arguing over costs. They tried to argue that I should have to pay their costs because they thought that I had only partially won the case. Well, that wasn't, that wasn't to be. Uh, I was awarded my costs in the matter, so I will be awaiting a nice check from her to cover my legal costs. And I just wanted to share that win with everyone. You know, sometimes, you know, We go up against some people who have deep pockets. Sometimes we go up against companies that are much bigger than us that are using our intellectual property without permission. Well, this is a win for all of you. It's a win for small businesses. It's a win for anybody who has had their intellectual property taken by somebody who might have deep pockets and is able to litigate the matter even though they probably don't have a case. So I just wanted to share that I had a win. Thank you to everybody for your support. And I look forward to bigger and better things, onwards and upwards, to Financial Foreplay and to each and every one of you. Take care. Pues ahí lo tuvieron. Esa fue Randolin explicando que ella ganó en contra de Kianik su caso. Ahora, yo no soy un abogado y yo no te puedo dar nada cuando se viene a lo legal. Cada país es un poco diferente y todo depende de las circunstancias de cada caso. En este caso se estaban usando cuatro palabras para el nombre. Y era Sugar Mama Financial Foreplay. Ese era el que estaba en violación. Y el que estaba en regulación era Financial Foreplay. Que esté claro esto, ¿no? Y como les cuento, en cada país es sumamente diferente. Pero siempre hay esta litigación que se puede hacer, ¿no? Y uno siempre puede litigar y uno puede decir, bueno, me robaron el nombre. Lo importante aquí es que Randolin registró el nombre. Hay muchos podcasts, como el caso mío, donde yo no registro el nombre, pero lo he estado usando desde 
el 2009 con el mismo caso de Financial Foreplay. Yo tengo potencial millonario ya se encanta ese año y si alguien llega a usar potencial millonario, que yo lo he visto, pero no en podcast, lo he visto en otras cosas, eso está bien. Si se usa en otras cosas que no sea otro podcast, se puede hacer, ¿no? Eso está bien. Ahora, no soy abogado y se puede litigar porque uno crea que está bien, no quiere decir que uno debe dejarlo pasar si esto le ocurre a, a uno. Randolin está súper contenta, pero aquí le están hablando en las noticias local sobre esto del de caso. Así que le vamos a dar. And certainly enough for two entrepreneurial Melbourne mothers to wage a battle over naming rights. I don't know how she can sleep at night. I certainly can't sleep at night dealing with all this stuff. It is trademarked and I have an actual certificate. On the one side, there's Rondolin Karolak, an author, financial planner, entrepreneur, and mother. A pup and a kitten. They looked like good fun. On the other, there's, well, let's leave that to her. My name's Kenna Campbell. I'm an author, financial planner, entrepreneur, a mother. These two clearly have a bit in common, but disagree on one thing, the term financial foreplay, and who has the right to use it. Financial foreplay is a philosophy. It's about how do we use storytelling and pictures and things that are brain friendly to make really complicated topics like financials easy for people to get and to implement. Rondolin has been using the name since publishing this eye-catching book 12 years ago. I get all these tradesmen saying, you know, my wife was wondering what this book is doing on my bedside table and people would joke about it. But if I found that if I could make people smile, If I could get their attention and grab it and hold it, then I could kind of slip the learnings in. But Rondolin's smile was turned upside down after Kenneth Campbell launched a familiar sounding podcast under her online alias, Sugar Mama. Welcome back to Sugar Mama's Financial Foreplay. I am financial planner, Kenneth Campbell. Financial Foreplay is now headed to court. I've already filed in the Federal Circuit Court because I want a public apology and an acknowledgement that my trademark has been used without my permission. In paperwork filed for the case, Rondolin notes her book Financial Foreplay was published in 2009 with a financialforeplaybook.com website launched around the same time. By May 2012, Rondolin had Financial Foreplay accounts on Twitter, YouTube and Instagram And by 2017, she'd officially trademarked the term financial foreplay with Intellectual Property Australia. Canna Campbell's first episode of Sugar Mama's Financial Foreplay podcast went live in June 2020. To me, this is a matter of integrity. I want it to stop immediately. It still hasn't stopped. You know, there are still over 500 instances that I could find online where my trademark is still being used. In December last year, Campbell's lawyer wrote that Rondolin's action had caused Campbell loss and damage and that Rondolin was being defamatory and that if Rondolin went to court, they would cross-apply to have her trademark cancelled. Later that month, Team Campbell would claim that financial foreplay has entered the public sphere as a commonly descriptive word, citing its use in a Huffington Post article from 2010. But by April this year, Campbell's lawyers wrote that Campbell had now taken further steps to sever connection between financial foreplay and her online and offline presence. I believe that I have the right to stand up and say, hey, hold on a second. It's my brand. In a recent Instagram post, Campbell announced that though financial foreplay was, quote, a name I created myself, she was dropping the term telling followers she, quote, didn't want to misuse or degrade the word, especially for women. Campbell wrote, foreplay is one-dimensional and the podcast would now be known as Fireplay. What Campbell neglected to mention was that foreplay is currently the subject of a federal court action in which she is the respondent. Timing is everything when it comes to trademark ownership. In Australia, the first to use a brand is the first to own it. Sharon Giovanni is a copyright lawyer. We basically need to show them that consumers will be confused or caused to wonder whether both goods come from the same source. As Sharon explains, two brands can exist with the same name, but not in the same area. So, Sharon, what we've got here is two brands called Boost, but in quite different types of products. Does that mean it's okay? It is okay because you won't have consumer confusion. So... 
In the case of two products with the same name, both in the area of financial planning, is that likely to be a problem? I think it is. Although in Rondolin's case, ultimately, the courts will decide the result and whether compensation might apply, which can happen if someone is found to have made money using another's trademark. One is called an account of profits, where you basically get the profits that the other person has derived from using your name. And the other one is actually called damages. And damages is does not, it's not based on profits, but it's a more loose figure that the courts can arrive at or the parties can agree to. And is there a cap to damages? No, there is no cap to damages, no. Kenna Campbell declined to request to speak with us, telling a current affair... Thank you for your invitation to be interviewed about this matter. Unfortunately, I cannot comment on live proceedings before the court. To do so may prejudice the proceedings. But with a court date looming, Rondolin still wants to know just how sweet business was for Sugar Mama's financial foreplay podcast. I'm suspecting hundreds of thousands. Ahí lo tuvieron. Espero que este reportaje explique lo que ocurrió. Y recuerden, estas son leyes de Australia y cada país es diferente y todas las circunstancias son diferentes. Si usted va a escoger un nombre o usted va a buscar un nombre para su podcast, haga una buena búsqueda en el Internet, escuche el episodio 22 y el episodio 88 para cómo escoger y decidir el nombre de su podcast para que no esté en violación de ningún otro podcast. Con eso dicho, yo soy Félix Montelara y esto es La Escuela del Podcast. Hasta la próxima.